Hello YouTube buds, I hope all is well with you. I am going to show you today my latest completed artwork. I gave it a longer title this time. It's called Young Snowy Owl with Icy Pine Branches. I know that's a word load there. Here's a quick look. So uh, let's go to my computer area and we'll talk a bit about this and also a little bit about photo editing and how that's quite a challenge, probably more for, for me than other people. I don't know, but I find it challenging. I learned some things after I picked this photo that snowy owls that are male are really almost exclusively white and except when they're really young. And you can see some of this pattern in the wings on their body, but not a lot. Um, but the female owls retain a good amount of this pattern, even into adulthood. And I believe this owl is younger because not only is there so much of the pattern showing, there also are a lot of feathers that maybe it's molting in some way, that it's losing its furry coat in some areas, this area in particular. And so I am theorizing that this is, in fact, a young female. Of course, icy pine branches. I had a very good reference photo. I'm not going to show that, actually, because I make changes often, and I don't need it to be exactly the same as the reference. I moved some of the branches. I did capture the feel of ice on top of the branches. And then you can see also these fine lines here are branches in the distance some trees in the distance. The branches are balancing off well. This one being very close is fuzzier. The details, it's, it's important to get the face right. Going to be something that the viewer is drawn to is really the animal's eyes and the face. Her eyes and face are in a good spot, location in terms of composition and uh, not dead center. Let's do some comparisons to the images I have on my computer. This is the photograph of the art. Let's talk about camera work and artwork a little bit, and that would be more of the tips and tricks for today. People are familiar with the term Photoshop, and I use a free version or a free program called GIMP, G-I-M-P. But from what I'm hearing on the Photoshop one too, that they're very complex programs not completely intuitive. The GIMP one has some, uh, like most YouTube has training videos available. You can do some things on a map. If you go to tools, you can go to adjust size or just color. And then this tool box opens up. You can see there's not a whole lot you can do. You can deal with exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows, saturation and temperature. The tint really goes from green to red like a TV set. So you have a lot more options than this on um, Photoshop or GIMP. This does have a more purple view which matches the artwork and so you, I'll just show you why you might want to invest in photo editing in terms of your time and dealing with that selling prints, art prints, because you really want the print to match the original and this is a pretty decent match. Your focus is important too when you're taking the photo. That's all about camera work, and so that's important. The trick I do for that is to zoom in on an area where you want your fine lines here to be really in focus. And if you focused here on your hairs, that you can see individual hairs and the eyes clear in a good spot, the rest will generally be in focus. Use your manual camera settings, smartphone or other digital camera. Then you can zoom back out. It would have been on focus on a tripod showing the art. Then you can snap your picture. This had to be lightened from the original photo I took of it. Um, I needed to make the gray lighter, which was achieved mostly by decreasing the blackness setting, but not doing it too much. So I had to play with that and reducing the blue a bit so that the blue was not so harshly dark and it brought back some of the purple. In addition, I changed the red. I think I decreased the red. 
that you will see with this version, which is very pretty actually. Um, but this is done on the camera's auto setting, so I can't monkey to that degree each time I want to post something to uh, Instagram and make all those corrections and fixes. It would take me forever. So the final photo, like, am I getting ready to make it for an art print? I got to make full changes. And then I did upload this latest one to Instagram as well. And so the camera wanted to make things as colorful as possible. This one is less gray. So pretty, yes. Blue, very blue, yes. But doesn't match the art enough. Often increasing contrast will make your artwork very good. If you increase it too much, it would make it look actually poor. You can play with that and see what I mean. It'd be too harsh. So to bring back the natural grays, I actually had to decrease the contrast. Let's go to... I don't know what kind of creature that is even. Is that a mouse? Is it a cat? You tell me. You can see that there are tools on the left side. It's going to have a similar feel to Photoshop. If you use something simpler than Photoshop, let me know. But this is a Mac version. There is, they make it for um, PC as well. More recent files are over here. Different layers, like Photoshop layering and things, you can do start some of that over here. I often use the drop downs and find that easier to find things. Some of the tools, they have grouped similar ones together. So there's more than one perspective instead of just perspective tool many i have never used before i've used rotate and perspective perspective is good when you i call it the trapezoid tool when you take a photo for the smartphone especially and it's going to be have like a trapezoid look that's the tool you would use to correct that and here's colors i usually start with file open and then what all this means, you have to convert things to open them. But that's the one I was showing and that's how it displays. I spent a good year learning the ins and outs of this over time. And I had the time at the time to do that. But it was a quite an investment of time and note taking and figuring and testing. Are there paint brushes? Yes, all those things. Duplicate is very helpful because you want to work on a duplicate of your original and that's always the safest thing to do. It should be the first thing to do and then work on the duplication just as an extra safety thing. If you remember anything, there it is, your second version there. It says untitled paintbrush, pencil, airbrush, ink. It'll remember the last thing you're on. If in doubt, you can change it to move and that will move things around and then your invisible stuff opened up because I moved it. You can always go undo is very helpful under edit, undo the last thing you did. Colors is the one where you, you often have to change exposure. Then another mini window opens up. What's nice is you can move it around if it's in your way. There's black level and then exposure. Black level I did use on this one, which I rarely use. And I did my original photo. If it's too dark, you have to increase exposure. The split view is very nice. So you can change things. Let's change exposure quite a bit. And we'll put up to like 1.0. You can see how this is before, and you're, this is a split view, you're, you're moving this line. This is after, so that's way overexposed. Cancel. If the colors are helpful, there's color balance. Shadows, midtones, highlights, then you can, here's your blue, green, red. And they're paired with their kind of their opposite in the red versus cyan, green versus magenta, and blue versus yellow. Curves is fairly complicated. Instead of just the values in this, which this is your grays, you can change that to red, green, or blue. And same as the other one, the it will affect the opposite. If you make something less blue, it might increase the yellows. You have to watch tutorials on this stuff you'll never figure it out so i'll put some hints in the description shadows highlights may or may not be helpful it breaks them up in different ways there's your white point adjustment 
it's hue chroma I've used. If you're if it's overly intense, you can change the chroma, which is the amount of color the blue is displaying. It, but that will change all the chroma. So split view, let's decrease the chroma by minus. And then it, by decreasing the chroma, you're eliminating it. If you bring it to zero, you've made it into a black and white photo. And hue is more like tint, I believe. I don't use hue. There's excessive amounts of chroma. That's just telling you what I'm talking about. See how much, it's like all the colors are, intensification is increased by a 21 level versus zero is the starting level. So I didn't talk about layers at all, but that's the main purpose of using these higher end thing is to manipulate things in various layers. I mean, you manipulate, manipulate the layer, but if you're doing more simple editing, you can simply just, in most cases, create a duplicate and just do all your manipulation on that one duplicate. Layers is needed if you had, say, your owl was perfect, but the whole background had a problem. You could save that photo by, like with little scissors, you cut the owl out and you do that by having two layers. You've created a second layer and you manipulate the background on one and keep the owl the same on the other, one on top of the other, and then you merge them at the end. And I only had to play with that a couple times. I've had to try and do that. Or I wanted to learn it and I was doing it. Anyway, that's what this looks like. And let me know what you use. And if you use GIMP or Photoshop, let me know what you like about it. I hope you enjoyed that brief chat about some photo editing and what you have to keep in mind when, uh, as an artist, you are wanting your prints to match your original as much as you can. This is all cool colors, you know, purple, blues, greens, all cool color themed. If you're doing warm colors, I've, I have seen that things get too yellowy. And one strong hint is if you're doing a red, orange, yellow, picture with lighter greens, warmer greens, you most often have to reduce the yellow and that will help your art to look, your photo to look better for prints to match the artwork. That may not be the always, but I've seen that a few times where that was a key thing to, to take a look at and to tweak the yellow. Anyway, you take care. I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye.